today continue the final message on a real Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. I've enjoyed my preparation as much as every Sunday. I'm going to tell you I've been doing this for a long time, probably in the neighborhood of some uh, nearly 40 Christmas series, 40 years of doing this in some form or fashion. I don't know that I've enjoyed one any more than this one right here. Um, I have probably for you uh, the best clip you'll ever see with this one. And we're going to talk about the chosen. This is about the shepherds today. It's Luke chapter 2, 8 through 15. And before I do, you know, it's really about the announcement and what that announcement, like it's the original Christmas greeting. Now we know that in that peak, Hallmark would create over 2,000 Christmas messages. Oh, they could have saved themselves lots of time and money if they just used the original message. Because it's the best of all. It was the one that calms fears and creates hope and calls to worship. It's the one that the angels gave us first that still resonates today, still matters today. And uh, who was it given to is our focus this morning. Given to those shepherds. Now, a lot of those cards have um, romanticized what the shepherds look like. And in the pastel collars and the beautiful scenery, we see shepherds in a light that we uh, mostly think of as little children coming into a Christmas play, but not the shepherds of that first century, not the shepherds of that moment at the time. You've got to understand the shepherds were, they were on the outskirts of the city. They lived on the outskirts. They lived in the fields. They smelled like they lived with sheep, and they smelled like they lived out, outside. They lived by campfires and, and rough uh, uh, lodging that they would place together. They, they not only smelled, they, they were untrusted. you you got to understand that if you lived on the, just on the edge of a, of a town or whatever and there were shepherds nearby and you got up the next morning and your lawnmower was gone, the first thing you thought was them shepherds again, bless God. You know, you, you, would, you immediately thought of those who they live in very meager means and were often considered um, those who were untrustworthy and living out there, making do, making way. Once a shepherd, always a shepherd. Once a shepherd, always a shepherd. Unless you're born David, king of Israel. Oh, there's a call on your life and no one else knows it. Not even your father, but God can take a shepherd and take him to the throne. Amen. Looks like I'm going to need a little um, steam for the engine this morning. Excuse me. All right. Shepherds. The most unlikely to receive the announcement. Later on, we would celebrate, and we have already the wise men, but a couple years later would be the wise men. But the Lord would reach the entire social structure of all mankind from shepherd to wise men, the richest to the poorest. you got to think about it to really fully understand. And as we read, we read verse 8 saying, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Not a little afraid. A lot afraid. I don't know if you've ever had a time in your life when you've been greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. First words out of the original message. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day. In the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You'll find a babe wrapped up in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, the same kind of cloth you would use to, to wrap up that, that new firstborn lamb, spotless, that's going to head off to the temple. They're going to use the same thing because it would be a prophetic sign that it was the Son of God, the Lamb of God. And suddenly, in this same moment, there was not only with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let's now go to Bethlehem, and we see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. A few years ago, uh, one particular church decided to enact this in a cinematic way. Their group is called The Chosen. 
And The Chosen did a 20-minute video that's probably the most authentic, the most true to the biblically correct text I've ever, ever seen. You've got to imagine, I've seen a lifetime of Bible being placed in some form of, of media. And I don't know of anything more closer than The Chosen. It went from this 20-minute to there's now 16 episodes over two seasons. And if you're not aware of this, please uh, have someone help you and you find The Chosen on the Internet. It is free. It's also by donation offering. I love that kind of moment when uh, there will be those who give their gifts for the Lord's work and then let the Lord reward them for what they're doing uh, in that. But this is a very powerful moment. If you see this in its entirety, and I would love for you to, you'd know that the story is usually through the eyes of one particular person or two or three. And this is one of the group of shepherds whom one of them is lame in their own in his own right, he has to have a cane. He's, got a, he's pulling around a little lamb that represents a whole lot what he is. He tries to take him to the temple, but he's got a blemish. And the Pharisees, of course, and not only throw him out, but then when he wants to go in to hear uh, the, the, the uh, teaching in the synagogue, they throw him out of that also. And so he lags behind as the shepherds go in to try to, to sell some of their sheep. And then they're, as night falls, they're, they're walking away and going away, and he's trying to catch up. And so we're going to join this clip at a moment when suddenly something very, very powerful and supernatural happens. Uh, you're going to enjoy this. This is the best. We've saved the best to last. I want you to watch this. This is called The Chosen, the Shepherds. Uh. <laughs> Finally, he's back. Uh. Hello, uh. Simon. <laughs> Stay with the sheep. He is useless. Why do you keep him around? He's a good boy. Uh, yeah. You want some dinner? Finally. Aaron made dinner tonight, so <laughs> nothing is cooked. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the food is fine. It's my grandmother's recipe, so leave it alone. Yeah, then that is why your grandfather left. <laughs> Again and again. Hey, take whatever they want. Oh, I wish that woman wouldn't have left the well. Oh, she was she was very, very beautiful. pretty. Very pretty. Mm. Very beautiful. Can I have my dinner now? Not with us. No. Your plate is over there. After what happened this morning, you sleep with the sheep tonight. And pay attention this time. And watch out for wolves. Watch out for the Pharisee. He might come after you. Mm -hmm. A Roman took another sheep yesterday. Simon, they're talking about the Romans again. But they've cooked it right in front of me. You're, you're, you're lucky. Been, you're lucky you're not part of this conversation about the Romans again and again. Let pay. pay. Take, they take whatever they want. Let's talk about something else.
So beautiful. He must I tell someone. He must tell everyone. Tell everyone. Tell everyone. Yes, yes, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've waited for this for so long. So long. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. Oh, it's okay. Isn't that powerful? People must know. Words come to life. The gift of that is that all that our imagination can be suddenly gets broader and greater. 
Why? Because people must know. And now, the day after Christmas, what do we do? What do we do with this Christmas? We take the message, the original one. Let's take the original one, and let's go with it. Let's, let's, let's run with it. Let's do what they did. Let's, let's hear what he said. They, they went into, and they had to go into why? Because something powerful happened. People must know. I love that because in every one of us, there, it's like an announcement. And we get to make that announcement with our lives. We get to make our announcement with our words. But we can tell every day opportunities. And it's very obvious the first part of that announcement was about calm your fear. Be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Have you ever seen fear like you've seen fear? I, I, this is a great moment to make the announcement because this is the most fearful day there ever been. So we can go and calm people's fears. We can go with the message when we, we leave a Christmas weekend and we leave a Christmas season. What do we do? We go with the announcement because people must know, calm people's fears. One man said there's 365 times in the Bible that it says, do not fear. That means one for every day of the year, one for every day of the year that we can. And fear of all kinds, fear of, of, of hurting deeply, fear of, of not knowing, fear of the unknown. Uh, we, 2021 gave us a word that became more known if it was probably not original to the year, but it becomes one of those words of the year is FOMO, fear of missing out. It's an acronym of those four words, fear of missing out. How many knows in Jesus you will never miss out? In Jesus, you'll never miss your appointment. You'll never miss your, your date with him. You'll never miss his presence. You'll never miss eternity. You'll never miss the message. And you'll never miss an opportunity. Because why? In Christ is the completion of all moments. I know, and uh, I have calmed down greatly. You should have seen me. But I have calmed down greatly when on CNN, a religion commentator come on and said, there should not be allowed anyone who is unvaccinated to go to church Sunday. Now, now I want to tell you something you've got to understand. Your pastor is, I love you today, and I, I love God, and I love people in general. But I'm going to tell you something, Come out, and something came out of me that just about dropped out of my skin. I had, to, I, had to, I had to talk to myself and tend to myself and say, and not only that, he used Scripture, love thy neighbor. And I said, I said, you forgot the first part, love the Lord thy God beyond all things, then love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. Don't leave out the first part of it. And part of that is come. And it's just like he was dressed in his religious garb, and I thought, surely that's the best way to do it. Let's pick someone, uh, call him Father, put him on TV. I'm sorry, I need to get off of this. Y'all don't need to amen or encourage me at all, okay, because I need to move forward. But I'm going to tell you, uh, Neil, I about come out of my skin. I, I, I had to. I had to say, oh, God, help me because of, yeah, and I thought, yes, modern-day Pharisees are still alive. The spirit of religion is still alive, and it's still trying to keep people from Jesus. But I got news for you. People are going to be gathered today all around this world, worshiping a great and awesome God, vaccinated, unvaccinated, having COVID, not having COVID, all those kind of things. We're not going to let any condition of this world ever rob us from loving God and loving Him with all our whole heart, and then we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves because if I don't love God enough to give the message to you and give you the right message and give you the original message, I want to tell you today, fear not in Jesus' name. He's on the throne. He's alive. Thank God a baby did come, but he is done resurrected from the grave. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He's interceding for you. Fear not in Jesus' name. People must know the right message. That's, that kind of just reminded me uh, of when they, they, they got, uh, it reminded me of a story I used many, many years. I've used this about what happened is shepherd was tending his flock when suddenly out in the pasture a brand new BMW showed up and, and, and out of the dust cloud there come a, a young driver who he comes out with his uh, brawny suit and his Gucci shoes and his Ray-Ban sunglasses and dropped them. He, 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 he leans into the shepherd and says, if I tell you exactly how many sheep you have, can I have one of them? And the shepherd, bewildered by this moment, just 
basically said, sure, if, if that's what you want. And so he jumps out of his car. He uh, whips out his uh, uh, Apple iPhone, connects to the satellite, makes sure that he's on the right uh, NASA page of the Internet, calls up a GPS uh, coordinates and navigation, scans the area, opens it up, a database, sends it to a little portable printer that's attached to his phone, and an Excel sheet spits out a 130-page report, and he says, I've got it. Right here it is. You have 1,586 sheep. And he said, that's exactly right. Well, he said, uh, it, go ahead. You know, that's correct. Take one of them if you want. You can have one of, one of my sheep. And so he watches the young man get over the fence and go walk toward the animals. And he picks up one, bundles it up. And before he gets to the car, he says, if I can tell you exactly what you do, will you give me back my animal? He said, of course. Of course. And he said, you're in a consultant. He said, what? You're a consultant. He said, how did you know? What, how did you know? He said, it wasn't, it wasn't hard to, to, to understand. You came uninvited. You answered a question I hadn't asked, and you don't have a clue what I do. Give me my dog back. Some people don't even have the right message, David. They don't even make sure you get it right. Jesus will calm your fear, not make you an anxious mess. Second thing he'll do, it's right there in the announcement. It's, it's verse 10 again when the angel says, not only do not be afraid, but listen to the rest of the announcement. He says, I bring you good news, good news of great joy that will be for all people, all people. If all people don't get the news, then none of us should get the news. And all people means all people of every, every social class and every status and every, every gender and race. All people get the good news. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. It's an announcement of what? That creates a hope that is beyond this world. A hope that goes beyond all that we can think or ask. It's hope that gives people purpose and meaning to life. It's hope that gives you the ability to get up every day. It's hope that gives you the ability to know that there's a better day ahead of us. And that's why we center all of our hope, hope not in the government of man, not in the education and the knowledge of man having learned more the dumber they get at times. And all of those will ever fail you. But I got news for you. There is a hope that is beyond all the hope of this world. That's why we call him the blessed hope. We call him the eternal hope. He's the hope of all ages. He's king of kings and lord of lords, and we can trust him all the way through. We don't have a message that creates um, fear and that creates uh, the, the lack of trust in God. We give a message of great joy, great joy. Now, not a circumstantial, fleeting message of happiness that you got happy one day. Thank God you got happy on that day. But I'm going to tell you something. Joy overrides even happiness because joy is a state of heart and mind that stays with us forever. But I love this part right here. That original message not only calmed my fears and created, it did something more powerful. It called me to worship. It called me to worship. It's verse 14. When they, you saw them run, that mad dash, and you saw Seymour break out of his lameness. That's what worship does to you. Worship will overcome all of your inefficiencies, all of your inadequacies, all of those moments when you worship God, something suddenly supernatural happens in your life. That you, throw, you throw off all the other uh, of the supports of your world and you remind yourself that call to worship, glory to God in the highest, verse 14. And on earth, peace to men on whom he his favor rest. I love this translation. That's why I've used this. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men and goodwill means favor whom it rests. When we worship him, we know that the favor of God rests upon us and we're able to receive and experience something supernatural in a moment when suddenly we're lifted out of our, our present state to another place. That's why we worship. That's why the Lord says, take one day of the week, the first day of the week, separate yourself, throw off all your work, throw off all of your identity, throw off all your titles, come and stand on the, on the, on the level ground 
ground of all people and lift your face and your voices. Lift your hands unto him and call him glory to God in the highest. Call him the highest above all and reset your week and your life by saying, oh God, I have received this call to worship you. Nothing greater in our lives than to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Nothing greater in our life. My most favorite moment of all the week is that moment and, and, and as Pastor David was coming back last night from seeing his mother and he texts me and says, you good? You good, doctor? You got everything you need? I said, David, I got everything but one thing. I need to worship. I need to worship tomorrow. I need to worship. I said, David, don't let, we don't let the season rob us of worshiping. We worship now greater than we've ever have. We don't let the situation of life to rob us of worship. We don't let the pain and the sorrows to rob us of worship. We worship God in the middle of everything we're going through, and it lifts us out of our condition and brings us to a place where we say, Oh, God, because I don't want to miss the message. I don't want to miss the message. I, I, I've just thought of this many times as I read this once on December. It's December the 17th, 1903. Two young men. I mean, just what I experienced, my daughter just running off to work, and what I've been able to do this year and where I've gone and, and how fast I've got there was why. Because two young men believed it could help. North Carolina, they could lift a, a, a contraption off the ground. And on their fifth attempt, they flew 12 seconds. And so they ran to a, a telegraph and sent their sister Catherine a message. Uh, fifth attempt, tw flew 12 seconds, we'll be home for Christmas. She runs down to the local newspaper and says, they did it, they did it, they did it. They flew, flew for 12 seconds. And on December the 19th, <laughs> the editor put it out there and involved right boys home for Christmas missed the whole message for God's sake didn't know the greatest invention of the of the 20th century happened in a moment and they sent the wrong message I want not to send the wrong message I want my life I want everything I do to say people must know they must know what a savior is born Christ the King Glory to God in the highest. He is worthy of all praise and glory and honor. He's worthy of all that. Oh, you're afraid today? Calm yourself. It's human to be afraid. It's human to feel fear. But it's a God who will calm your fears and soothe you like nobody else can reach you. It is a hope that comes from His presence that enables you to bow. Oh, don't just bow. Run to Him run to him I don't know if his name was Seymour but I sure appreciate they gave him a name and humanized him for me and you and I appreciate him I know what that is that old arm for him falling there in the marketplace and that whatever caused that knee I've had a lifetime of those moments but I'll tell you something something happens supernaturally when I'm in his presence and I begin to worship him I'm, I'm able to go out people must know this kind of a good God who will raise you in the midst of your circumstances I don't know what your pain is I don't know what your injuries are I don't know what this year has been for you I'm telling you I've had one year started in 2020 and, and has went through all of 2021 I, don't, I hope that God this year ends it ends I I mean, ends and ends now. It's been a year, 24 months. Actually, it's been 26 months. And I hope it ends and a new beginning. It's, I'm praying and believing God, and I'm worshiping my way through. But people must know God will sustain you and keep you and help you and raise your head in your most difficult day. God will be there. People must know. Let's stand today. Jesus, the original message so powerful so powerful to our hearts the original message resonates inside of us oh god do not be afraid this day in the city of david a savior is born christ the king the lord of lords and king of kings glory to god in the highest and favor rest upon those of whom he gives peace to father help us now heads are bowed. I, I, I don't want to m m miss the moment for anyone but you that are worshiping online and you in this room oh get right with God. Get right with God if you're in this room if you're watching worshiping online get right with the Lord let me just help you Father in heaven
In Jesus' name, forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me, I pray. In Jesus' sweet name. Oh, people must know. Let's worship him whom people must know about for just a moment before you sit out and finish your year. You've come on the first day of the, of the week because you've come, you've run, run. May the, all of your hurts be bandaged. May all your supports fall off. May your head be lifted up. May you go forth to be a, a messenger. They're one of the original messengers. Let's worship him together, Pastor David. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. I worship. speak over you as your pastor I want to speak over you if you just lift your head and receive I declare the original message of the angels over your life right now that every fear you have be calm in fact you know you feel a noticeable difference a, a noticeable difference in your heart rate in your breathing that in your anxiousness, your nerves are calmed and your worries and fears are elevated and you begin to feel and sense a, a new rest and peace. Others would say, what's wrong with you knowing what you know, that you're not um, in, a, in a, a matter of living on Xanax and everything else, but you are free from all of that in Jesus' name and you're set free and your fears absolutely and that there's a hope that you have going into a new year like no other time in your life that you believe that God can do the best in this moment in your life in the worst of all circumstances that a good God does good things and his best is for you and through you and by you and that you will by the power of the living God worship like there is no restraint on your life and worship like there's no one watching and worship like no one else matters and worship like he's worthy of being worshiped that you'd have a year of worship like you've never had in all of your life 
and the strength and life and peace of God be yours and your head be lifted up and, and you go forth because you got one thought on your mind everywhere you go to eat today, everywhere you are today to shop in every store that you're in and every place that you encounter people, people must know, people must know, people must know. May that be embedded in your heart and mind. May this church get it like we've never got it in all of our life that people must know that Jesus is Lord and King of Kings and He's worthy of all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah!